I'm Carrie and this is Student Loan Chit Chat. Today is Labor Day. It is Monday, September 4th. All right, so what we're going to talk about today, it might be a little bit lengthy, but um, we'll take whatever time it needs, right? So I want to talk about 10 truths that I discovered on my way to uh, becoming debt-free. And it's important to note that um, my 10 truths for me may not match the 10 truths for you. So in other words, because we each live our own lives and we each go through our own individual experiences, it may be that some of the things on my list of 10 truths may or may not apply to your list of 10 truths. But what is most important is that each person in their own way find their way to financial freedom, okay? So I have um, been working on being financially free for the last decade and um, some luck along the way but I would say even more so than luck was a lot of strategy okay luck definitely helps but luck with no plan and no strategy on how to use that luck um, you can find that you're not in any better position than when you started and um, so anyways so um, here are my 10 truths and again they may not totally match yours but if you can take something from them then that's great this is not in any particular order all right so here we go so on my journey to becoming debt free all right um the first thing i did was i avoided like the plague anything that dealt with buy now or pay later if it i'm holding my cell phone if you're wondering why i'm looking down okay um if you are um one of those people who is tempted to do the buy now, pay later, um, I totally would recommend not doing that. Here's the problem, <coughs> excuse me, that I see with buy now, pay later. I guarantee you that there's going to be something else you want to buy later when the time comes. So when you lock yourself into, oh, you know, I can go shop on Amazon and I can, you know, buy a bunch of stuff and I can put it on, um, delayed payment all right whether it be weeks months or even years you know i've seen furniture stuff you know don't, I've, I've already seen advertisements for 2026 okay um in rooms to go lazy boy literally driving by lazy boy the other day on del mabry here in tampa and there was an ad for don't pay anything till 2026 i don't even know what i want to have for dinner tomorrow much less what i want to financially commit to in 2026 so <laughs> excuse me so make sure at all costs you avoid things like buy now, pay later. And here's the other thing to also think about. If you can't afford it now, what makes you think you're going to be able to afford it later? I know the idea, I'm assuming, is supposed to be something like, well, you know, I don't make as much money now, but I'll make it in the future. Well, look at the pandemic and how many people are immediately out of a job. You can't plan the future. So tying yourself up in the future for what is typically, I, I'm going to be willing to bet my 56 years here, okay? Most of this buy now, pay later stuff, these are luxuries. These, these are wants, okay? This isn't, you know, buy, you know, surgery now and pay later, you know, life-saving, changing events. This is, you know, buy, buy that luxury chair you want, okay? Buy the sofa set, the table set. It, it's, you, I mean, I like to say it's usually on, you know, crap, but come on, guys, let's face it. Most of it is not life-changing stuff, okay? So... If you don't have the money now, what makes you think you're going to have it later? And if even if you have it later, there's going to be something else you want to buy, okay? The second thing I realized on my nearly decade-long road to um, financial freedom is um, financial stability is critical. Now, some people will say, oh, well, that's an obvious answer. Ah, but think about it, okay? When I say financial stability, I'm looking at different areas, not just one. But let's t take a look at one, which is housing, Okay. In my case, I purchased a $100,000 condo. I could have purchased a $200,000 condo. I could have purchased a much nicer condo than what I live in right now. Even though what I live in now is cute, okay, um, then I'm blessed to have it. It's wonderful, all right. But I could have gotten a 200, 225, maybe even $250,000 condo, okay, when it looks like a cute little town home with a little... little you know, two-car garage that you park underneath and all of that. I, I could have gotten that, and I would have still avoided PMI, okay? That's the insurance that you have to buy. 
when you don't put 20% down, I could still put 20% down on that. I chose not to. I understand that if I was going to reach financial freedom, um, I needed to stabilize my housing very, very much so. I needed to get just what I needed and nothing more. And I did just that. So I purchased a 100K condo, right? About 840 square feet and nothing more. As a matter of fact, when I went looking for a condo, I remember telling my uh, realtor, I said to her, don't even show me one that goes above 125,000. I, I said, because what happens is when you go, well, let, let, let's just take my case for example. I said I would not go above 125,000. And then let's just say, you know, you present, well, here's one that's 140,000. It's only $15,000 more. And then before you know it, your 125000 is out the window and you've just bought yourself a $225,000 place, okay? Which I'm sure in this day and age, in 2023, would be a dream to find, all right? Because my condo is now selling for around 200000 okay? The condo that I bought three years ago for 100000 this condo that I'm standing in, is now running at about 200000 all right? So, stability in your finances. But it's not just stability in your housing. It's also stability in areas like transportation and stuff like that. So your goal is to make it so it's um, not changing. For me, another stability area was I choose to lease a car. I know there are people who swear, okay, it's that Dave Ramsey leasing is fleecing and all of that wonderful stuff. You know, one of the things that I realized for me was if I could stabilize my uh, transportation, I might have a chance to improve myself financially because having to constantly maintain a savings account for used cars, which by the way, you know, I've been driving from the age of 16 to 50. So um, I did it always the way I was told by a used car, you know, so many years old, yada, yada. But unfortunately, also depending upon the type of used car you get, your lifestyle and the whole nine yards, I just found that I was always spending money maintaining them. And eventually I looked at my lifestyle. I looked at the leasing lifestyle and went, heck, you know, I live six miles from work. I don't have any kids. Um, the only seat that ever gets used in the car is me. I don't drive that much. It turns out that I am a leasing fan. It fits my lifestyle. It may not fit your lifestyle, but it definitely fits mine. So for me to become debt free, okay, I choose to lease a car. And so I leased my uh, first car a few years back, told myself if I hated it, I would just go and buy me one, okay? I loved it so much, I really have no intention or desire to go back and own a car. That's a personal preference, okay? Um, I just don't wish to own a car. And by the way, there are reports out that uh, car repairs are up now by about 20%. So I think it almost at this point doesn't matter whether you own it, lease it, do whatever fits your lifestyle, fits your needs, and fits your budget. Um, and my leasing plus my auto insurance and gas, the whole thing is about 11, I think about 12% of my income when I calculated it, it was about 12%. And it's suggested that your whole transportation needs should not be between, I think it's around, they said around 10 to 15%. So I'm well within the mark, even though I choose to lease a car and I absolutely love it and I intend to do it a third time. All right, so financial stability. Number three, this is a big one. Um, to you people out there that may be single, whether you're single with or without kids, you don't have to be married to find financial freedom, okay? Um, when I was married, um, I, I, we, we were just always broke. I mean, it was just always, always broke. And one of the things that scared me the most um, about divorce was I remember telling one of my gal pals, I said, well, gee, if I can't make it on $150,000 a year income, joint income with somebody, how the heck am I going to make it on a teacher's salary, you know, in the mid-50s? Okay, actually, I was in the low 50s at the time. And I remember her and my late mother saying to me, you actually make more money than you realize. It's just been severely mismanaged. And I remember thinking, really? Well, lo and behold, they were absolutely right, 110% right. And um, I want to give hope to you out there there that you know maybe and I and of course it's going to be harder if you have kids okay because there are certain needs you have to have but there are also certain tax deductions that people with kids have that I don't get so don't don't be thinking that because you are single without a partner okay that you too can't be financially debt free you can um, you're gonna to have to do it a little bit differently but oddly enough it may actually be easier because um, when you do it alone, you are the sole dictator of where that money goes, all right? So don't believe that you have to be 
with a partner that only people with two working, you know, two people working in a household can achieve financial freedom. Not true. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, um, kind of tailing on that. If you're going to be married, you need to be married to somebody who sees money the same way you do. In other words, you are able to value in similar aspects how you view and treat money. No, it really is true when they say a lot of divorces are caused by money issues. Yeah, they are. Um, I don't need the fanciest handbag. The car that I lease is a Toyota Corolla. Okay, I literally walked into Toyota about five years ago when I decided to start leasing. And I said to them, I would like to lease a car and I want you to give me the cheapest car Toyota leases. I said, I don't care if it has roll down windows. Okay? And that's what I drive is a Toyota Corolla. And that Toyota Corolla, by the way, has more features in it than the 10 year old SUV that I was trading in. So keep in mind that if you are going to be in a relationship with somebody, you have to have the same financial goals, the same financial vision. All right. If um, you're with somebody who wants the latest and the greatest, the FOMO, the fear of missing out, the YOLO, the you only live once. If you're with that type of partner, if you're with a partner that has a shopping spending addiction, if you're with a partner that just simply doesn't see the value. I, I have literally talked to people who have said, I don't see the need to save for retirement because, you know, you might die before you get to use it. That is true. But if I don't die before I get to use it, I'd like to think I'd have it there. So, you know, I, I'm ready when I retire because, yeah, well, I will always kind of have a foot in working. I, I want to be able to take that foot out if I get too tired, okay? If I get to the point where I go, you know what, I, I don't want to work a full-time job anymore and I'm, you know, 69 years old, I don't want to be sitting there going, well, you know, I spent all my money um, as I, you know, got older because I didn't think I'd make it to this age. Well, I, I don't want to live like that. You need a partner that has the same vision as you. Um, and here's, here's the other thing too, is I was watching this the other day. You know, if your partner has a spending addiction, if your partner is very concerned about image, okay, and looking the certain way to the neighbors, you know, your neighbors don't pay your bills. Your neighbors don't pay your bills. So it really is true. Um, you and your partner, okay, need to have the same vision financially. For you to go together otherwise it's going to be one person's going to be looked as the saver and they're going to it you know uh, be disliked by the other person because that person the other partner's going to go oh, you never spend anything and then the other person like, i'm going to be the one going geez you spend too much you need you need to have a compromise but that compromise even then still has to be the same goal do you have a goal together okay so person you pick for a partner needs to see things the same way you do. I, I'm, I'm not a brand name person. Okay, yeah, let me, let me back up. I love brand names and I shop brand names only on clearance. Not even on sale, clearance. It's got to be like the last one at that store, the last one made in the country and it's on sale for 85, 90% off because they just want to get rid of it. As a matter of fact, speaking of money, this hutch behind me, it's a... Uh, I'm not going to, well, maybe I'll tilt the camera down here. It's, it's a full-blown hutch. Let me tilt the camera down so you can see it, okay? All right, this hutch, it's a full-blown hutch. This is um, actually a $2,500 hutch, okay? True story. And I got it for $300 because the furniture store, it's an upscale furniture store, moderately upscale furniture store that I got it at just wanted off the floor. And I said, well, how much? And they said... $300 takes it off and I said sold, okay? But you and your partner need to get excited at the same financial goals, those same financial steps, all right? So anyways, there's that. All right, um, <clears throat> five, be willing. Okay, steps, ways, to, ways I got myself to become debt free, all right? Number five, um, be willing to give up some time. Sacrifice some time, maybe even a lot of time right now to make extra money so you can get yourself debt free. And it doesn't matter if that time is made up working for yourself in a self-employment job or working for somebody else. The goal is to start raking in as much cash, lowering your tax, your taxable income and all of that wonderful stuff as much as possible. Understand that the time you're gonna give up is gonna pay off in the future. And if you don't believe me, talk to anybody who paid off their student loans over the last three years that continued working to pay off their student loans. And now student loan repayments start October 1st, okay? 
student loan repayment start October 1st and the people who worked all the last three years to get themselves out of student loan debt ask them if it was worth that time I'm gonna to tell you they said yes so you know some we all have to pay our dues I, I've had to pay my dues I have paid my dues I will continue to pay my dues to keep myself in this awesome state okay the bottom line is be willing to give up time at least to get yourself out of debt and understand the long-term reward all right um six have a vision whether you are with a partner you need to have the same vision okay and you really do you need to have the same vision all right or whether you're by yourself have a vision what do you want your life to look like a year from now three years from now um if, if you can't see a vision in your head and, and you know I, I know that probably a lot of self-help books will talk about vision people kind of roll their eyes but you know what it, it really is true if you can't see it how can you work towards it when someone says well I can't see myself doing that then how are you ever gonna get it think about that well I can't see myself living debt-free <laughs> excuse me then how are you ever gonna become debt-free you can't see it allow yourself to see it when I purchased this condo in 2020 <laughs> excuse me and I purchased it three weeks before um, COVID closed down the city I saw myself living here completely mortgage-free I saw it I also saw the redesign of this place this place did not look anything like this when I moved in okay um, and I remember I showed some pictures to some people some friends they were like how did you know you could decorate the wall so it would so, so your room, room would look like this and I said because you got to see beyond the clutter and the mess that you have created for yourself today you need to see beyond that and it's that looking into the beyond if you can see that keep your eye on that okay yeah you're gonna have to face the clutter and the mess you're in right now but can you look beyond it I, I could see my condo transformed even before that I had the ceiling the floors the walls all pulled out pulled down and done okay because I did about a fifteen thousand dollar ceiling to floor remodel same thing with my finances when I purchased my condo I told myself you know yeah I, I could see myself in a condo that's paid off about a hundred hundred twenty five thousand and I could pay it off in about three years and that was the goal and that's what kept me from reaching into a two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollar condo okay so have a vision you got to be able to see it um seven keeping to getting yourself on the road to debt freedom really important have reward checkpoints along the way um this you know i love to cook and i love my bunt cake pans and all of that stuff i love my sewing hobbies i continued all of that throughout this time okay um it's important that you reward your milestones set yourself a milestone and give yourself a reward okay and a reward in my opinion especially when we're talking big things like this a reward could be more than just I'm gonna take myself out to dinner okay my opinion your reward needs to be bigger than that it needs to be something that, that this is what worked for me it needed to be something that I could tangibly hold with me in other words something that I could use over and over and over and revisit over and over again when I started learning how to cook um, I invested in some Staub cookware. Um, Staub cookware is top of the line. And I invested probably about 500 bucks in that. But that 500 bucks held me. And this was after I met major goals of paying down the condo. Okay. So um, I'd been in the condo, I think it was like a year and a half. And so I, made, I met major goals. Okay. I paid down, you know, the first, you know, 10,000. Then I paid off the next thousand. These were major goals. And by investing for me, in something like five hundred dollars in cookware that allowed me now to have a hobby as I continued to make other major financial goals so even though I hear things like you know well take yourself out to a movie and a dinner that's fine but we're talking you're 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 trying to go debt-free here okay you're trying to get yourself down to like as close to zero as possible have some goals that are commensurate to the size goal you're going for I hope that makes sense okay and it doesn't have to be a 500 goal it for some people it might be a hundred bucks for, for some people they may even be able to afford a thousand dollar reward whatever it is but I needed something a little bit more than just dinner and a movie okay I needed something that was much more tangible and so once I made one of my major goals towards towards paying off my condo 
I allowed myself to purchase $500 in cookware. And that cookware has lasted me now a couple of years. So it was well worth it, okay? So just something to think about. Um, number eight. This one's going to be a little bit controversial with people, if that's okay. A little controversy is good. Um, and a lot of programs, especially like Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman and stuff, they'll say, cut up all your credit cards, get rid of them, never touch them again. I disagree with that. Now, I agree with it in the beginning because when I was 20, um, I, I didn't understand credit cards and we're not taught how to use them. Um, and so a lot of people, including myself, we do it through hit and miss. But as a 56 year old now and looking back, what you really need to do is think of credit cards. I know this is a good analogy, but I'm going to give it a shot anyways. Think of it like a gun. Yeah, I have shot off a gun before at a gun range, okay? I've been to a gun range a couple of times, all right? Instead of saying, don't ever learn about a weapon, just run from it, I'd rather have you learn about it. I'd rather know how it works, respect the dangers of it, bow down to it in fact, okay? And understand it and know the role that it can play in your life versus saying, I'm never going to learn to shoot a gun ever, okay? Um, at this age, even though I don't own weapons, okay, um, I could handle learning how to shoot one now because I un understand, you know, the respect of it, blah, blah, blah. Okay? I just choose not to do it. But I could understand it now and I wouldn't faint, fall apart, okay? Same thing with credit cards. I would rather, in my opinion, it's better to understand the role of credit cards because here's the bottom line, guys. We are a credit card society. We are a credit card society. You know, we can sit and say, oh, no, your credit score doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. It does. You want to be able to, you know, go on trips, book airfares. You want to be able to insure your travel. A lot of credit cards companies come with travel insurance built into that credit card. You need to know how credit cards work. And I will tell you this, you know, I haven't paid credit card interest in years, okay? Very, very little in credit card interest have I paid. Very little. Um, but here's the thing. When it comes to dealing with credit cards, it's fine, in my opinion, to use them for their perks. Okay, I love my little perks that my credit card gives me, a little 2% cash back. But that's because I never pay interest on it. Okay? So that's really the bottom line. Or the interest that I've paid over the years is so small, trust me, they've given me way more in cash back than I've ever had to pay in interest. Okay? So it's really understanding how to use credit cards. I think that's better than running away from credit cards something to think about. But in the early stages, and especially for really young people without guidance, they probably shouldn't use it at all. But as you get older, you're going to need credit cards. I would be very hard pressed to have my small business um, and not be able to use a credit card. That, that would be very difficult for me. All right. So that was a understanding how credit cards work. Another last two, um, by all means, not the only two, but I'm going to make it the last two. Nine, be willing to be unconventional in how you work with your money. This is, um, to me, this was probably, uh, out of this whole list of 10, this was the greatest thing that helped me become uh, debt-free. I have been very unconventional in every way possible on how to become debt-free. I'm on an earlier video that I did. Um, I talked about how I got rid of a $3,000 savings account. Yeah, I ditched the entire $3,000 savings account. Why? Because I realized on my first mortgage payment, if I would ditch the $3,000 savings account, I would save almost $1,700 right around there in interest in the first year. Remember, my mortgage was only $45,000. Okay? And I don't say only like it's you know nothing. Okay? It, to, to me, it was a nice size mortgage. But you know, compared to mortgages that people take out, no, it wasn't a big mortgage. But that point aside, I realized I was holding on to a $3,000 savings account, and if I only made the minimum um, mortgage payment for the first year, I was going to lose half of that savings account to interest. Well, that just seemed like a dumb idea, so I ditched the whole entire $3,000 savings account, and I literally wiped out, wiped out the first year's mortgage on the very first payment. And then how did I go by handling emergencies? Well, really well. I, I had credit cards, I, I, and I knew, okay, I knew how I handled them. They had zero balances on them. So I thought, you know what, what's, you know, if, if I have an emergency, I'm just going to use it off one of those cards. And almost all of my cards at some point have a 0% introductory, you know, thing for the first one, 
one and a half years, even sometimes up to two years. So I sold myself, you know what, I'm going to ditch the savings bank account versus holding it and watching it be whittled away by paying the bank interest. And if I have an emergency, I'm just going to use one of my zero percent credit cards. I had one emergency in the three years that I had to um, pay it off and that was a little plumbing issue and I think that cost like 300 bucks. I paid them on the credit card and the next month paid it off, paid no interest. But that can only be done with you understanding, you know, your financial situation and you understanding what you would do in an emergency. But that, but that would be considered very unconventional. Unconventional to get rid of your savings account. Unconventional to say, well, I'm going to use a credit card as an emergency savings. Be willing to be unconventional. Unconventional in the fact that I like leasing a whole lot better than I like buying. A whole lot better. Okay? These are not mainstream necessarily, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that the end goal is met. Okay? So be willing to be unconventional. You don't have to follow mass entertainment. If I had followed Dave Ramsey's advice, okay, if I had followed his advice, I would have um, used every penny that I ever received towards paying off my student loan debt, which was 110000 I would have used that because, according to Dave Ramsey, uh, you know, student loans were never going to be forgiven. Well, that would have been a heck of a waste of money because my $110,000 student loan was forgiven in 2022. So blindly following what social media tells you to do, in my opinion, is a recipe for financial disaster. And I knew that when I came into some funds um, from my late mother, you know, I, I really had a choice. Purchase a piece of property or pay off my student loan. It, it was going to be one or the other, okay? It wasn't going to be both. And I said, well, I know for a fact that the student loan, I'm a public service worker, so why would I put money towards something that I knew would be forgiven? And I went ahead and bought the piece of property. All right? And even if the student loan had not been forgiven, even if I had not been a public service worker, to me, the roof over your head is more important than the student loan. So if I had to have picked, let's say the student loan had no public service forgiveness on it, and I could only get a piece of property or a student loan, I would have gotten the property. So either way, the property was going to win, hands down. All right? Don't listen to mass media entertainment. Doesn't mean you can't listen to them for entertainment purposes um, or to listen to them because you just simply enjoy it. You know, learn, you know, bits and pieces. You learn about how, you know, people think when it comes to money. But when it comes to your money, you must absolutely listen to yourself. Okay? <laughs> and then the tenth thing, and the final thing, which this kind of leads right into it, you are the most qualified person to get yourself out of debt. Nobody is more qualified than you are. And, you know, I, I came to realize this. I, again, you know, you would think, man, didn't you know that? No, I really didn't. Because I was very scared, especially when I got divorced, thinking, how am I ever going to get myself out of debt? I was, I had a, at the time, my student loan was like 85000 It grew to one hundred and ten. dollars okay? Um, at the time, my student loan was 85000 I did not understand income-based payments and that when you're on income-based payments, you will never pay off the loan because income-based is not high enough to pay off the principal and, excuse me, it's not high enough to pay off the interest and reach into the principal. So those of you out there getting ready to go on income-based payment thinking, oh, good, this loan is going to be paid off. No, it will not. You need to call your service provider. You need to say to them, I want this loan paid off in 10 years. What's the cost going to be to pay it off in 10 years? It is not, I guarantee you, going to be on income-based payment. Those of you <coughs> that are getting zero payments, okay, you've been told and you're celebrating, hey, you, you know, zero payment owed because you make too little. That balance is just going to keep going up, 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 and up. You're going to hold on to that balance for the neighborhood anywhere between 20 to 25 years. Some of you may even push 30 years of holding it. And then when it's forgiven, it's going to be forgiven on that higher balance, and now you're going to owe the IRS. Okay? So what I began to realize is I really thought that I needed somebody else to help me become debt-free. Like, oh my goodness, the only households that can ever become debt-free are going to be, you know, double-income households. Or you need to make a lot of money. No, you don't. School teacher. Okay? Single school teacher. One income. That's all I've got. What, you be, what I began to realize basically was, you know what, through the unconventional means that I used to pay off my debt, through trusting in myself, and not social media, through understanding my beliefs about money, nobody could 
do for me what I did for myself. Now, there will be those, and there are those, that will sit in there and go, well, you didn't have to pay off your student loan. Uncle Sam paid off your student loan. Yep, you're right. Uncle Sam paid off my student loan. And in return, I have spent and am in year 18 of a middle school classroom teaching the next generation and their generation. As a matter of fact, um, two of my students this year, I taught their parents 18 years ago. 17 to 18 years ago, I taught their parents. I now have their kids in my classroom. Yes, the taxpayers did pay my $110,000 student loan. Yes. But what hopefully the taxpayers have gotten in return, I'm not teaching those kids. I'm teaching the kids of those kids. There are people who could not last one day in a middle school classroom, much less 18 years. I had a little technical glitch there at the 30 minute mark. Anyways, in closing, those were basically the 10 things that I felt worth, was, you know, worthwhile in sharing at, you know, to help get me out of debt. But remember that being debt free, it's not the same picture for everybody. Okay. So one person's sense of what they want to do in there or what they're able to do when they're debt free may be different than my goals and what I want to be able to do as debt free. Okay. We don't all have to match, but what does match is that enough of our income now can go to where we want it to go. And I am going to tell you over and over folks, you know, stay away from those buy now, pay laters. Stay away from the things that have you purchased stuff now to pay it off down the road. And that includes student loans if you know you're going to struggle to be able to pay it off. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you will consider subscribing and have a great day. Bye.